Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm going to be using a gorgeous background stamp today to teach you several different variations of the spotlight technique. Now, quick look at this stamp set, and you might think, wow, I'm not going to color all that in. And that's exactly what the spotlight technique does for you. It allows you to concentrate on a specific area by bringing emphasis to the entire background. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the subscribe button down below and make sure you click that bell icon so you'll know when I'm live right here on YouTube as well as when I share a new video. Let's sit over the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. This beautiful background stamp is called Breathtaking Bouquet and it can be found in the brand new mini catalog with Stampin' Up. Lots of great products inside this catalog and this background stamp caught my attention. And while you might look at it and think, wow, I've got to color all that in, you absolutely do not. So I'm gonna teach you a couple variations of the spotlight technique and you can choose the way that best suits you. Since this is a large background stamp, I'm gonna recommend that you cover your work surface because I'm gonna show you a really easy way to use it. I struggle with some osteoarthritis down in my wrists. Pressing the stamp this way is really difficult for me. So I'm gonna be using it face up. I'm gonna be using a piece of thick Whisper White cardstock because I'm gonna be using the alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers. Keep in mind, you can color in your image with whatever medium that you prefer. I'm gonna turn my stamp face up on my work surface and I'm gonna be using the Memento Black Ink since I'm gonna be using those alcohol-based markers. Now you can cut your paper the size that you need for your finished card or you can cut it the size of this background stamp. Whichever is easier for you is going to work. I like to give the stamp pad a little tiny twist while I'm inking it up to make sure I don't miss any of those definitions of the stamp here. Once it's been inked, I'm gonna take my cardstock and I'm gonna lay it right here on top. Now, rather than picking up the stamp like you typically would, this is where my large grid paper comes into play. I'm folding over the other edge and I'm placing it on the top and I'm going to rub with a flat hand to transfer the design from the bottom up. This is especially great if you find these background stamps are really large and difficult for you to handle or you often get a blurry image because it's just too difficult to position for you. Once you've transferred the design, you can go ahead and open up that paper and then you can either lift and then just dump it off like I'm doing it, or of course you can lift it with your paper piercing tool to help you remove it. But that's gonna give us this gorgeous and perfect background every single time. This technique does require that you do this exact same method a second time to create the spotlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that one more time. This piece that I just stamped is actually larger than the original one just because I was using a piece of scrap. I prefer to use a larger piece because I'm able to navigate my punch or my die depending on the area that I want to focus. Now there's two ways that you can do this. You can go ahead and punch out the area that you want to be spotlighted first. So you're coloring only the area that you need to color. Or you can color a spotlight area and then go back and touch up any areas you may have missed. Now keep in mind this works well with any punch or any die of any shape. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that upside down so I can navigate where I want it. And I'll stick that in, I'll just pick a spot that I like and we'll punch that out. Now you might be looking at this thinking, wow, I can't really decipher what this is, which is one reason why it might be easier for you to keep it on here first and color it, then punch it because you have a broader visual area to color it. And it's easier to see when one flower starts and another stops. But another tip for you would be to do this. Go ahead and slide it right back in place. Then once you have it aligned, you can go ahead and color just the circumference of the punch. Now I wanna just give you a tip about the Stampin' Blends markers for this project, but I have one that's already completed for you. I'm gonna be using the Highland Heather combination. There's a light and a dark marker, which is gonna give you that beautiful shading. And I love this because you do not have to be proficient with colors in order to get a real professional look. I'm going to use the lightest shade first. That's just a matter of preference. And you're going to see that there's a thick line and a thin line, which delineate the tips that you can use. And I'm going to go ahead and use the thicker one for this because it's a broad area here that I'm going to cover. I'm going to color in the petal here of the flower. Now I'm just going to do one of these just to give you an idea of how the Stampin' Blends markers work. I have an entire video series on using the Stampin' Blends markers in lots of various ways. And I'll make sure that I put a link down in the video description below so that you can head over and check that out if you're interested. This is the darker shade. And the one thing I absolutely love about this image is you see the definition lines here? 
The artist who created this background stamp actually put those in just to give some appearance of 3D to this flower, but I love to use it as cheat marks to help me decide where the dark color is going to go. Now the alcohol in here is going to have to evaporate. It takes about 10 seconds. I do recommend that you wait before you go back over it with the next step in order to create some blending to get those harsh lines out of the way. Now on a flower here that doesn't have any of these lines or definitions in them, I wanna give you another tip. For this, I'm gonna be using the Daffodil Delight and I'll just color in a little area here just to give you an idea. The darker shade now, I'm gonna to gravitate to just one side or one area. So in this case, I'm gonna put it just a little bit here at the bottom and up the side. And I'm gonna do the same thing now on all these other petals. So all my dark shades are to one side. The secret to getting this blended really nicely without those harsh definitions is to go back to the lightest shade. And what you're going to do is you're gonna pull the colors together. Now it's not important that you cover the entire area because as it evaporates, that's gonna give you areas of light and dark, which will lend credence to the depth of your project. Now, as I mentioned to you, I have one that's already finished, which is here. And I'm gonna talk you through the colors I used. So again, the Highland Heather and the Daffodil Delight. And this one here is actually the Flirty Flamingo. Now this specific area here does not showcase the green that I used, but I wanna point that out because I have two other samples for you besides the one we're creating together today that does use the green. And this is soft sea foam in the combination. Now, the great thing about this piece that's here that we've used is you're able to get other circles or shapes punched out of here so you can maximize that background that you have stamped. I've got a small piece here of basic black cardstock, and I chose to heat emboss my greeting so it would be very prevalent on my card. I chose my greeting from the Peaceful Moments stamp set. I selected this one, Life is Better with a Friend Like You. You can see there's lots of fun images in here with mixed fonts. I'm gonna be using the Embossing Buddy. There's an anti-static powder inside of here. It really helps to keep those stray flecks off of your cardstock. I'll be using Versamark ink, which is a watermark pad and perfect for heat embossing. I've also made sure that I've got my white embossing powder nearby so I can powder it immediately. I'm gonna take my greeting and I'm gonna lightly tap and travel across this ink pad. You wanna make sure that you don't rock the greeting, otherwise you're gonna get ink around the outside perimeter. And then we're gonna stamp that here. We're gonna immediately come over to the embossing powder and we're gonna sprinkle that generously, keeping in mind that the excess is going to fall inside that coffee filter so we can pour it back in the bottle. The Stampin' Up! Pea tool works wonderfully, and I love it because the tip is encased, which means if you're going to do multiple images or greetings, it's going to help retain the heat for you. There's two speeds. There's a speed one, which is great for drying watercolor paper or for other medium techniques. And the speed two is actually going to set the powder to turn this powder finish into an enamel type look. Now, I'm going to make sure I'm not covering up the vents on my heat tool either. And then I'm going to work in one area at a time. And then what I'll do is I get closer to the center. I'll just turn it around and hold it by the other end. Now you're gonna to wanna to work in one small area at a time. And once the gun gets hot, it's actually gonna conduct heat right on the cardstock and the powder that's next to it. So this is gonna travel on heat very quickly. Now, one question I get asked quite often is, can you overheat it or burn the paper? And the answer is yes. If you overheat an area, you're going to notice that it turns like a light yellow color and sometimes even brown, which means you've scorched it and the paper itself has actually gotten too hot and over embossed the powder. Once it's finished, you should be able to turn it and it should all look like an enamel shiny finish. If you run your finger over it, none of the powder should be left behind because if you've missed an area with the heat tool, that powder will simply rub right off. We're ready to put our card together. So I'm gonna set those off to the side and I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet. I absolutely love this because it keeps my work surface sticky free. And if you recall, this was the one that was sized for our card. This is the original background that we didn't punch. I'm gonna flip that over and I'm gonna add adhesive in my four corners. This now is going to get adhered to a piece of coordinating cardstock. This is Highland Heather that matches those Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers. The one thing I love about Stampin' Up! is the color coordination. Now you're going to notice that I was straight up here at the top. I didn't leave a border. For this card, I decided to create a very unusual border. So my borders are going to be along the sides and across the bottom. 
I have a basic black cardstock base here. I've scored it right before you joined me. I'm going to use my bone folder for a nice crisp edge on my card. And then I'm going to adhere this layer to the front. Now you're going to find all the cutting dimensions for today's project down in the link of the video description below. I'll do the exact same thing this time, which means I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to place it all the way here near the top of my card base. I'm looking to see that there's about equal space on both sides here, which is going to leave us a little bit larger margin here at the bottom of the card. Let's go ahead and work on that spotlight technique. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can actually adhere it with adhesive or you're gonna use dimensionals. Now I have several other samples for you with different variations. So this one I'm gonna use with dimensionals. So I'm gonna flip this upside down and I'm gonna add three dimensionals to the back. I want to make sure that they are well balanced so that if I mail my card, it's not going to come out lopsided on the receiving end. My take your pick tool is one of my favorite accessories here in the studio because that paper piercing tool attachment will help me take off those paper backings. Now this is the important part. It's about mirroring these so that the colored area looks like a spotlight of the background. I want you to identify a spot on the stamp that looks identical here to the background that you stamp. So you see this petal here looks like this petal here. So I'm going to hover over it to make sure that that's gonna be the proper alignment. Now you may have to pivot it one way or the other, but I'm looking to make sure that my image is going to be continuous once I lay it down. So you can see that my petals are continuous here as well as here, and then you're gonna tack that in place. Here's that greeting we created. Now I'm gonna add dimensionals to the back side of this as well. And then just like before, I'm gonna be very careful that I'm generous with these to distribute them evenly. I chose to place my greeting down here near the bottom. And there you go, very simple and very elegant. Let me show you the other variations I have for you. The exact same thing that I did here, I did here, but the difference is, is I did not use dimensionals. I also focused on a different area of my background stamp. So it doesn't have to be at the top and in the center. It can be anywhere on that card. This time it blends in a lot easier because it's flush with the card base where this one is elevated. Finally, my last one includes an additional layer. So I use the two and one quarter inch circle punch to create a black layer to coincide with the base of my card. Now you can adhere it flat just like I've done here, or you can use dimensionals, which is what I've done here to elevate that. And just again, just make sure that you're mimicking that pattern underneath. Because of this additional layer, keep in mind you've got about a quarter of an inch here that you're gonna have to compensate for when you're looking visually. So look a little bit further out to make sure that your pattern is aligned. This is the card we created together today, but I would love to know which of these styles is your favorite. Would you leave me a comment below? If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me, and I'll be happy to send you complimentary catalogs. And I'll be sure to include Stampin' Up!'s largest sale of the year brochure, called Celebration. The products in this book are completely free, your choice, with every $50 purchase through March 31st, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.